Welcome to the New School of Marketing podcast, the place for smart, simple strategies that will amplify your business results. Sharing practical tips, insider knowledge and actionable advice because marketing is something that every business owner can do. Now, let's get started. Introducing your host, Bianca McKenzie, mum, lover of snow sports, camping, horse riding and in-demand launch strategist and Facebook advertising knowledge bank. Hey there, and welcome to the New School of Marketing podcast. I hope you are well wherever you are. And if you're in Victoria or New South Wales, I'm sending you lots of love and strength to get through yet another lockdown for Victoria and one of the longest ones for New South Wales so far. It is so incredibly tough. So, yeah, big hugs to you all. Um, some of you might have been tuning in for a while and some of you might have known me even longer than before this podcast and followed my blog for years. Either way, I've been a Facebook advertising strategist and ads manager for quite a few years now. And if you're in business, you'll know that Facebook and Instagram constantly keep changing. Yes, and they love throwing new things at us. And as an ads manager, this is extremely frustrating but it often also opens up new opportunities. So sometimes I might be swearing at Facebook, (laughs) but I also know that they're constantly working to make things better for everyone. So whereas in the past, the changes mostly involved uh, the Facebook ads dashboard and how it operated and how it looked and things like that, this year and some of last year, we've seen major changes to the advertising industry and things are really different. It's not just a matter of having a button moved or a dashboard refreshed. No, this time Apple has actually made changes and that has affected everything. And of course, it's not just Apple Privacy laws keep changing and the industry is affected by those too. And on top of that, there are now a lot more advertisers on Facebook and Instagram than when I started as an ads manager seven years ago. So in this episode, I want to talk about what has changed in terms of advertising and what this means for you specifically. So this episode is designed to help you course correct if you've been advertising and things have suddenly changed inside of your account. And a lot of us are simply not seeing the same results that we used to. So it means that we need to do something differently and come up with new strategies to test. But before I go into this, I want to get back to basics and mention that your foundations have to be solid before you throw any money at Facebook ads. And I've said this before, Facebook ads amplify. So it's going to, in a way, blow up what's already happening in your business. But first, let's start at the start. What are your foundations? The foundations of your business and marketing are a mixture of your offer, your message, your audience, and your infrastructure. So let's talk about the foundations. First up, your offer. What you sell is important. As you can imagine, if you offer a product or a service that nobody wants, it's really hard to sell. Equally so is when your product or your service isn't good or doesn't look great. So it's really important to have an offer that people want. And it's great to go through some sort of validation process. And I'd like to say that if at least one or two people who are not family or friends have purchased what you have to sell, that is a validation process. It means that somebody wants what you have to offer. And the reason I'm mentioning this now is because a lot of people think that at some point that what they're selling is not what people want. And that might not be the case. It might be that not enough people know about it to them want it. So, but what you offer is really important. Secondly, your message. So you may have heard the saying that someone can sell ice to Eskimos. (laughs) So if your sales message is on point and speaks to your ideal audience, your offer, and 
dare I say it, even if it's not the greatest offer, has a much higher chance of selling. So your message is essentially what needs to sell the offer. It's kind of like your salesperson, so to say. And for those of you who cringe at the word sales, it doesn't have to be the sleazy kind of thing. Your message needs to speak to the right person and tell them in their own words why they need this offer. And this is why I talk about, you know, tuning into your audience a lot and listening in how do they say things, how do they word things, how do they speak so that you can use their words. And there's nothing stronger than to use someone's own words to solve a challenge or a problem. So your message is incredibly important. Next is your audience. Knowing your audience is super important too. And I keep saying this in just about every episode, but I mean it. You need to know your audience and what their challenges are and what their dreams are. Who are they? What do they really want? What solution are they looking for? How do they speak? What words do they use? So you really need to get to know them like you know your bestie. And you'll be able to create an offer for them that they want and speak about your offer in the exact way they need to hear. Only then will they open their wallets and purchase from you. I don't know if you've ever been to like a super good sales page where when you're reading it, you're like, oh my God, this person is speaking directly to me. It's like they're in my head. They know me. Like they are using my words. This is me. And you just like nod all throughout. That is what you need. You need to know your audience and you need to formulate the message in the right way. And also your infrastructure. So all of those foundations I just mentioned are only good if you have the infrastructure set up for people to purchase from you. If you have an offer, but you have no way for people to purchase from you and give you their money, it isn't going to sell. And you'd be surprised at how many people make it hard to purchase from them. I don't know if you've come across, you know, places where you've find a website or you find a Facebook page and you just cannot get in touch with them. You need to make it as easy as possible for people to buy from you. No hoops to jump through. Make it easy. And the easiest way is to put a buy now button on your website and hook it up to a payment portal. Or if people need to make an appointment before they can pay you and uh, work with you that way, then make that easy for them too. So if you run a service-based business where people need to make an appointment to work with you or see you, give them an online calendar option or an option to send you a message or call you on the phone. Or even better is if you give people multiple options to contact you because some people don't like picking up the phone. They prefer to just go to a booking form. So your infrastructure needs to make it easy for people to buy from you or work with you. Okay, now that we've gone through the foundations, let's talk about how advertising has changed this year. I want to mention that for some people, it hasn't changed all that much, but from what I've seen with my clients, as well as my peer group of advertisers, things have changed. Now, marketing has always been about building relationships, but it is even more important right now. And in previous episodes, I've spoken about the no like trust factor and how crucial it is to build relationships with your audience. And this is something that has become more important in the past few months. The way I basically used to advertise for my clients, especially course creators and service-based businesses, was by promoting a free lead magnet and then let the funnel do the rest. So people would sign up for something. I would basically drive traffic to a landing page. People would sign up and then they would go through the funnel. And I've spoken about funnels in previous episodes, so skip back to those if you want to learn more about funnels. Well, this isn't working as well as it used to. 
or at least costs have gone up dramatically. And this is partly because of the iOS and privacy changes, but also because there are simply a lot more advertisers in the space and they're all competing to have their ads shown in people's news feeds. So what we have started doing is continuously run engagement or video view ads, which are basically organic posts or videos that perform well and we turn them into ads. And I'm not talking about the boost button. Stay away from the boost button. <laughs> you can turn them into ads properly. And it helps my clients be seen by new audiences as well as their current and their warm audiences without asking them for something in return, except for maybe some engagement. But there is like no question, no CTA in terms of sign up, give me your email address or pay me something. It is just a way to show up, to engage and to build a relationship with their audiences. So we use them with new audiences to, in a way, introduce my clients to these audiences without asking for anything. So it's almost like they're just seeing an Instagram or a Facebook post show up um, and they don't need to do anything. They can comment, they can engage with it. And a lot of what we do promote are posts that do have some form of CTA in terms of comment or ask a question, but it really is just to build a relationship and to have engagement. So we can then retarget these engagement audiences and video view audiences with ads later on, where we can then ask them to sign up for a downloadable or for a webinar, and that's when they take the next step. So in a way, it's actually making the runway longer, but we're seeing really positive results with this. Another change in the Facebook ads landscape is that Facebook ads needs longer to work out what's working and what isn't. And the algorithm is always a mystery to me. And I don't think anyone really knows how it works except for anyone who works at Facebook. But previously, we could run webinar ads seven to 10 days out from the actual webinar date. And right now, this doesn't work at all <laughs> because it takes Facebook longer to gather data. Unless, yes, unless you constantly advertise from your account and you have recent data available. So, of course, this data is probably not for webinars unless you run them all the time. But Facebook really loves it when your ad account is, so to say, warm and used all the time. So in the past, you might have only run webinar ads when you had a launch and you'd get leads to sign up. But right now, it takes longer for Facebook to optimize. So running webinar ads seven to 10 days out doesn't work as well, especially if your ad account is cold, because it takes that at least that five to seven days to sort of figure it out, to get into the sweet spot. And you don't want to be running webinar ads three months out from your webinar. So things have changed a little bit. So what we've been doing for clients is to continuously run ads, even list building ads with like a downloadable lead magnet so that we can then invite those warm leads to a webinar later on when we run the webinar. <laughs> so they kind of already come into my client's vortex and then we can invite them to a webinar later on. Again, we're making the runway longer and we are basically just trying to find out what is working right now. And this two-step approach is what we're adapting for course creators that launch um, as well as service-based businesses, especially with webinars. So it almost becomes a longer-term strategy and the longer you can keep things running, the more data you sort of gather. So to recap, things have changed in the Facebook ad space. iOS changes are making it harder to track results because anyone who has opted out from tracking doesn't show up in Facebook Ads Manager. It has changed how Facebook optimizes and it takes longer for ads to work themselves out. So in the past, I would have looked at ads 48 to 72 hours later and made changes and tweaks. Right now, Facebook takes about five to seven days to sort of optimize, especially when you're using campaign budget optimization. It takes 
longer. So you have to just let it run longer and you can't tweak it as, as quickly. So things are changing. Privacy laws are changing, which means changes in the whole ads landscape. Um, there's different changes per regions and countries. So Facebook has to comply with that. And that means changes as well. And there are so many more advertisers competing in the space. That means that building stronger relationships with your audience is increasingly important. The ads landscape is forever changing. In the past seven years that I've been an ads manager, I've seen so many changes, I can't even count anymore. But these are some of the biggest changes I have had to navigate over the years. And if you're confused or you're worried about them, please don't. Uh, I want you to know that you're not the only one. Even a seasoned ads manager like myself is navigating these changes without knowing what's around the corner. Nobody gets a heads up from, from Facebook. They just love surprising us. <laughs> it's very frustrating. But they also love seeing people get results. So they will keep making changes to improve their customer experience. And they have been thrown curveballs. This Apple iOS change is a massive curveball that they've had to navigate. If you're looking for support with your Facebook ads journey, I welcome you to join me in one of my programs where we navigate anything Facebook throws at us and we can do it together. Facebook ads are really, they are a great way to find more customers and to get your products seen by more people. And I think it's still the most affordable way to advertise, as far as I know, and with billions of people on Facebook and on Instagram, because Instagram is owned by Facebook, you are bound to find, find your audience there. Like they are there. There's so many people on Facebook and on Instagram. So if you need support, I welcome you with open arms and we can navigate all of this together. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the New School of Marketing podcast. I hope it was helpful and I can't wait to share more marketing tips with you next week. If you're ready to take your business to the next level with Facebook and Instagram advertising, make sure you visit newschoolofmarketing.com to download practical free resources, plus subscribe to the podcast and never miss an episode. I can't wait to go on this journey with you. Until next time, take care and market your business every day. Oh,